Hey everybody, Kevin Hogan with Gold Trails. I have been sitting for hours upon hours going through a huge amount of video that I shot while I was out on my Gold Trails. And I will tell you, there is one very reoccurring thing of all of my Gold Trails. And that is, is that there's always at least one member that really stands out at each one of them. And it's not because they're, they're shoveling more material or they're they are they're got their dry washer or their sluice box or whatever set up right, or they're actually running their metal detector right by having the coil on the ground and wearing a set of headphones. Now, these are the people that, that really stood out because their willingness to help other members. I want to introduce you to Jerry Trailer. Jerry Trailer is a chemical engineer out of Houston, Texas, that joined us in Montana at the Hopeless One claim. While we were out on the claim walk, I was talking about surface events, things like floods and, and snow melt and everything else, and what that does for the distribution and the concentration of gold. And when I got done with that part of it, we started talking about different events like hydrothermal, epithermal, and, and throwing out some USGS information on where they could find the maps and so on. And Jerry kind of Jerry kind of looked over and, and, and said, hey, can I share some information about supercritical water? And I was like, absolutely, please do. And in two minutes, Jerry shared what supercritical water was and how it is so important for the distribution of gold below the surface coming to the surface. Take a look. Everybody knows water is what comes out of your faucet. And if you put it on the pot and it boils, then that's steam. And if it's in the freezer, it's ice. Well, water can stay, it's only liquid here between zero and 100 degrees C. But if underground in geologic like thermal events volcanic events water can remain a liquid but it can remain a liquid in what's called a supercritical regime and there are several things that do supercritical take for instance if you enjoy decaffeinated coffee they use supercritical co2 to take the caffeine out of the coffee beans because it causes the CO2 to remain a liquid in a condition where it wouldn't ordinarily be that way. So same here with water. Water stays super it, it, in the supercritical regime. The combination of temperature and pressure keep it liquid. And it look if you had a glass of it and you could keep the glass supercritical, it would just look like the water that come out of your faucet. But the glass can't maintain water in supercritical regime. So what you got is when it's in the supercritical regime, regime, it basically becomes a universal solvent because everybody thinks, oh, gold is noble and nothing can dissolve it unless it's like aqua regia or something like that. But no, supercritical water will absolutely dissolve gold, quartz, just about anything, which is why if you're out hunting, you look for quartz stringers, because that's where this supercritical water that was way under the surface was looking for a way out. And when it found a crack, its way out was up. So... Supercritical water is what's dissolved, and once it reaches a regime where it's no longer in that supercritical regime, boom, it kicks out, and it's it's rock. That's one of the best explanations I've ever heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. That is fantastic, and by far the best very short description I've ever heard describing supercritical water and its effects of gold on getting it to where we can actually get to it and, and prospect and mine it. You know, but there's something more to Jerry, and it's it's Jerry's willingness to help everybody, and that was one thing that that I saw throughout the entire two days that, that I was on the Hopeless One. We had a pretty good group, and I would be over here working with this group and talking to these people. Maybe they were dry washing or setting up a recirculator or even metal detecting. I'd look over, and there would go Jerry to go over and help somebody else. And and to me, that just Jerry epitomized what Gold Trails is. There's a lot of things about Jerry that I really, really like that really put him into what I consider the core of Gold Trails, yeah, like a Gold Trails instructor, if you would. And that was the attention that he spent with kids. It was, it was I, I kind of got a kick out of it because it really reminded me of myself and a few other people where you're standing there talking to the parents and the kids are standing there and the parents suddenly realize you're not really spending that much time talking to them. You're really talking to the kids because the kids those little prospectors right there are the next generation. Jerry, thank you for everything you did at Hopeless. You truly epitomize what the GPA stands for.